why I've got this. It's a DJ mixer, but I'm not Using it for DJing, why would I be doing that? That's insane. That's what I'm going to explain. That rhymes in this video. Zoop, look at that. Zone, zone 23. I think I'm saying that correctly. Zone 23 from two guys, Alan and Heath. It's the DJ mixer, as I'm sure you can imagine, mixing simplistically between two channels of audio. But there's more to it than that. And that's kind of the point. Zoop, so. Two main channels of input. So, boink, you can see there's a crossfader, and two main channels, one on the left and one on the right. On the left, as I explained in a different video, I have Ableton going in. So, one of the inputs into the DJ words, one of the inputs into the DJ mixer is Ableton. Well, you can see it up there, but it's actually from the computer over here. In a different video, um, my fingers are all overexposed. In a different video, I explained how I have two monitors, but it's really only one monitor and there's a, a switch that just toggles between the two. More about that in a different video. But anyway, I have Ableton over there on my computer going into one of the inputs on that mixer. Side tangent, can you see some new toys too? More about that later. At first we're thinking, but that's mad, why have we done that? That's, what's the point in just having the Ableton go out, but then back in, it's, it's all sort of to do with the filter. Again, as I explained in a different video, I'll stop saying that, uh, but as I explained in a different video, it, it's all to do with this zone filter. DJs know there's just something magic about the zone filter. I have no idea what it was. I, I'm trying to do the analysis, but I can't quite figure it out. It just sounds musical and nice, and I will try and figure out why, I, I promise. I can grab the cutoff, grab the resonance in a way I just I just can't in software, partly because the, the, the software's not as good. Also, it's just not the same. I mean, there is a zone filter in Tractor, quote unquote, but you can't change the resonance and it's it's not the same. Anyway, you kind of already knew that, so what's all this new stuff? He's new, what does he do? Let me explain. So, these are boxes of lights and buttons, drum machine, synth slash sequencer, sampler, the Arturia drum brute, a drum machine, an analog drum machine. Okay, well I should, I, should, I, should have, I should have probably pointed this out for those unfamiliar. These are all analog hardware boxes. So unlike say an Ableton push like that, or maybe one of the, like the, the Novation Launchpad Pro, or oh, that uh, push over there, even that guy. So some devices, boxes are digital. They just send little bits of information to the computer and then the computer makes all the noises. With these guys, it's analog. So all, all the noises and stuff comes from the boxes themselves, not from the computer. I mean, you can connect these to the, in fact, for all of them. So for all of these, you can actually connect them to the computer, but they're really, they make the noises themselves. So they're analog, quote unquote, quote unquote, hardware. What was my point? Oh yes, the Arturia Drum Brute, which is an analog drum machine. Then we have the Novation Circuit Monostation, which is a, a synth. Uh, what, was, what was it? One of the other Novation synths, the base station or something. Anyway, it's a, it's a really cool synth, and it's also got a sequencer and stuff built in, super powerful, and you can mix things in and out, as I will, ex as I will explain in a sec. So, drum machine, synth, and then sampler, the sampler being a Pioneer Torres SP-16. So, drum machine, synth sequencer, and sampler. Now, what I've done is make this go into this, this go into this, and this, Go into this. The focus is wrong. Why, why did that? Why did that happen? Importantly, I can mix the levels as I go. So, for example, remember I said this, the drum machine, goes into this, the synth sequencer, and I can mix it in with the. I mean, I mean it literally says audio in, in in the mixer control, and then I take that output and put it into this input, which again I can mix the level off with the with the mix a bit, in this case, in the touch screen. So it's really it's a bit of a workaround. It saves me having to have a multi-channel mega mixer type thing, because I've literally just put that into that, that, into that, that, into that. So on the left hand side it was Ableton, and on the right hand side it's the analog output, all of which I can run through the zone filter and then route it back out to Ableton. So the main outputs of this go into my computer, the, the, the Ableton over here. So that goes into that, which you can see up here, in the stand-up zone. Anyway, 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 this is where it gets more interesting and why I should have probably mentioned this further towards the beginning of the video. I've done something more than this. So, if you take a closer look, maybe I can do a, a zoom. You can see if I get the focus right, not, the fo not that focus right. 
not not that focus right. If I get the focus on the camera right, you can see that little metally bit pointing out. What are you doing, maniac? What are you doing? Sticking out. You're sticking out like a lunatic. That is the microphone input for the mixer. Remember, this is a DJ mixer, so you normally have one mega banger on the left hand side, one mega banger on the right, but then you also have the the mic going in so you can stand up on the decks and flail your arms around and go one, two, three, flap your arms or whatever people do with the, the DJing. So most DJ mixers and even the comparatively small ones like this have a microphone input. And that's what that little sticky up bit is. I'm, I'm going to go in for a closer look. So I'm just going to zoom, oh, 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 poof, like that. And can you, maybe if I get lower down, Who's, who's, who, who, who? Sort of wiggle, sort of flap about. Ooh, that's going to be, that's, that's going to work just fine. Then the microphone's not right. Oh, you, this is disaster, total disaster. Much better angle. But uh, now I'm off the angle for the microphone. That's okay, we'll just live with that for the next few moments. See this, the thing sticking up through the adapters and stuff. It'd be better if it didn't have all the adapters, but that's, that's fine. So that's going in through the microphone input, this this cable bit sticking up, the sticky up bit, you can see it. That is the clap. Not that clap, the, the clap from the drum machine up there. Let me raise myself up again. Beep, 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 beep. So I have the clap from the analog drum machine, so the Arturia drum root. I have the clap rooted out separately. The way it works is if you stick a cable bit in the one of the individual input out in the words. You have a main output, but also you have individual outputs for the individual instruments. But importantly, if you send something out through the individual instrument outputs, it bypasses the filter. And in this case, it allows me to route it in separately into the mixer. So this mixer effectively has three inputs. If I get the focus right. There's an input on the left, Ableton, an input on the right, the output from this analog chain, but it also has this microphone input, and this microphone input is the clap, which doesn't go through that filter. I mean, it has a high and low EQ, but importantly, it doesn't go through the filter, and so imagine this. Uh, so the clap is separate. So what I could do, for example, and this is what I normally do, actually, I have the output from the analog chain low passed, but the clap not low passed because the clap's going in through the microphone input and the microphone input doesn't go through the filter. And I like that. It's quite specific, I suppose, but it works. It works mixing wise and it's interesting and it allows me to low pass filter stuff and crank it up and distort the filter and all that sort of fun stuff that we love analog for, amongst other, other reasons. But whilst having the clap unlow passed means I can, it just I mean, it's nice, I like it, I like it. There is of course no right way to root all the audio about and plug all these boxes into other boxes with lights and stuff. It's personal preference, but I like how I've done it. This, into this, into this, into this, and of course I don't even need to use any, I, could, I mean, I could, if I just want to use the drum machine, I can. I don't have to use the synth or have to use the sampler. I mean, I have to turn them on. Even though these are chained up, I don't have to use them all. I could just use the drum machine. I mean, I have to turn them all on, but I don't have to trigger the synth and I don't have to trigger a sample. I just press play and it roots it through here and roots it through here and that roots it into here. Whoop! And then it sort of goes over to here via cables into the computer. Ableton, which I can see up here or on the other screen if I press a button. I'm way offline with the mic if I stand over here. This is a bit better. Ooh, I should have probably mentioned that it's not only a low pass filter, this zone filter. That's how I normally use it myself, but there is a, a button up there for high pass, so I can press it. Now it's a high pass filter, but I normally use it in low pass. Oh, I, me reaching around the tripod, just missed. I failed at pressing a button. Live on air, on, not live, edit, edit, edit. In addition, cool things about this chain is I can process things as I go. I like playing with it, twiddling the bits, pressing the buttons. Lights go flash, 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 flash. Excellent. So it's this fun mishmash of analog and digital. Remember, I have Ableton running in, so I could say send some digital stuff in, and then because this goes out to Ableton, I can take this analog chain and run it through Trash 2 or some other digital based software device thing with VSTs or, or even just Ableton. It's personal preference, but it's fun. It's the, the best of both worlds. I mean, there is a concept of doorless music production where you don't go into a computer, but 
I'll save that for a different video. There's some new things in the room that I'm excited about, and I'll just have to tease that. You probably have spotted them if you're somewhat familiar with the channel. Poke, poke, poke. It's exciting, and I'm having fun. It's it's a whole different way of making music. In summary, I'm using a DJ mixer for not DJ mixing. Why have I done that? Well, I explained in the video. It's I'm effectively using this mixer box thing with the with the filter, the zone filter that everyone loves. I'm using this DJ mixing box thing to root audio about and mix things in myself and like balance things. I mean, you've got obviously got the track faders and stuff, but it's the fact you have EQs as well it means it's cool. Do words and sentences and stuff multiplier. So this and this. Is the, the is it just low and high? It's an EQ, a very simple EQ, but it's an EQ nonetheless. So the clap that comes in from the drum machine, I can EQ the high and low frequencies to just slightly dial it in as I need, just by grabbing the control. And I need to flap and flap and flap about, flap 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 about or faff about in the software in Ableton. You can just lots of fun, much more enjoyable, much more hands-on and enjoyable. Equivalently, EQ, equivalently. There's some play on words there, and equivalently, equivalently, um, I can just do simple EQ on the, the Ableton coming in, or the, the analog chain coming in on the right, just by poof. I mean, it sounds mad, but it's, as someone who's spent pretty much all of the last seven or eight years in music, uh, eight, eight or cusp, maybe even coming up to nine years, eight, let's say eight years, someone who's spent pretty much all of the last eight years working entirely in digital with touches of non-digital, like the drum machine, I've had that for a while, but it's, I've, been, I've been almost entirely digital. It's nice to get hands on. It's it's nice to do things in a different way, and it, it's it's different, and I really like that. And it's it's a whole new territory of exploration and stuff, learning and things. More about that soon in a few weeks. Yes, yeah, you'll see. Inspiration, an idea, something to think about if you're considering plugging boxes into other boxes and making sounds. Do sound things on and lights in in a room. Uh, this it's the think outside the box. The box that, that's designed to contain multiplier. Put multiplier in a box. Get in the box multiplier. No, I'm just gonna stick my head out the box, out my arm, out my leg. Ha, have some of that box, Ben. I'm getting jumping out the box. Box is designed for people that are supposed to be in boxes, not me. I'm not to be put in a box. You're a box. Ah, look at me, I'm out of the box. It's very affordable as well, so it's a nice alternative to what you may have been thinking otherwise. If you the, the mixer, buttons and sliders. Catch you guys in the flippity flip.